Okay, hey, you have finally convinced me. I finally see the benefit. I know this is something that I learned in Financial Peace University. Dave Ramsey do it. Hell, I spent a lot of time watching videos of some of my social media best friends out here doing it. And I was like, eh, I watched it. I kind of got it, but nah, I wasn't really buying it. But now I'm convinced. I, now I truly understand the need to do cash envelope stuffing. Am I gonna do cash envelope stuffing? I don't know, that's a whole nother story. But at least now I understand the benefit of it. Let's dive in and talk about how I got this lesson. It's two parts. One, I think is because I, I'm a little bit disciplined when it comes to my spending. But the other reason why I didn't comprehend it is because I'm hard headed as hell. We're gonna talk about it, let's dive in. Yo, what's good? I'm Marcus. You're at the channel, The Debt Free Dad, where we're talking financial takes, financial topics. Hey, and I'm letting y'all know what's going on in the household of DFB because my family is on that journey to become first generation millionaires, financial freedom, as we define it. As always, I'm a licensed attorney. Also, as always, I'm not your attorney, so this isn't legal or financial advice. Just giving my opinion and takes on topics and financial concepts and letting y'all know what we got going on over here. Cash envelope stuffing. There were a few reasons why I just could never wrap my mind around cash envelope stuffing, okay? The first reason is just where I'm from, you never want to have a pocket full of money on you, okay? You want to have money. <laughs> you want to have money, but you don't want to have it all in your pocket. I'm talking about people putting money in their socks. People put their money in their crotch. People will put $10 in their pocket just in case the jack boys come, and then the rest they will put in the sole of their tennis shoe. I mean, people got really, <laughs> people got really creative with places that they hid their cash because as a general rule, you wanted cash, but you didn't want to go somewhere and have a big ass wad of cash on you. So I could never wrap my mind around cash envelope stuff in for that absolute reason. Like I just don't want to deal with that much money. I don't want to go to the ATM. I literally, I can't even, maybe once a month, if that, I don't, I mean, I probably go to the ATM maybe once every three months for some weird ass reason when I need cash, but most times I don't need it. If I go to church, I want to give an offer, I could do it through an app. If I'm paying a bill, it's done through an app. So like, there's really no reason for me to ever go to an ATM and I don't want to do it consistently to do cash envelope stuffing. So that, those are some of the reasons why I just couldn't wrap my mind around it. The other reasons was that, you know, it just wasn't something for me. Now, it is something that could benefit people, but it just wasn't something that benefited me because I keep my budget is always accessible, is always on my phone. So I typically know where I am within a category. And as far as I'm concerned, like you, you ever have a budget category and you spent 50% of that category's money, but it's only like the 10th of the month. When I realize that and I see that, I just curb back my spending. So it's not necessarily if I got it, I'm gonna burn it or swipe it. I just have, because I have visibility of the budget, I'm able to kind of pull the reins back on a category when I need to pull the reins back on a particular category. But I told y'all last week that a family member reached out to me and wanted me to help them with their budget. And I was really proud. I was like, yes, this is cool. So let's talk about the details, okay? And I'll put the link to that video above. Long story short, they got a, a toy. They wanted to make their toy nice and how they wanted it to be. They didn't have the capital to do it, so they used a credit card. They were out enjoying the toy for two or three months until they realized, damn, you know what? Paying this credit card bill sucks ass. Now, this is an individual who hasn't owed anybody anything to make payments on, including a mortgage or a car, in probably a decade, right? <laughs> so imagine you're not owing anybody anything for a decade, but you bought a toy, you got a little overzealous, now you're making payments trying to get out of it. So that was the position that this individual was in. Fortunately for them, like I said, it wasn't anything and it's not anything that they can't overcome in the next, you know, if they pay their cards right, three months, you know what I mean? Or two months. If they take their time and slow roll it, six months. So it's not anything that they can't climb out of. So as we were sitting down breaking the budget down, 
we have those fixed budget categories, you know, the utilities, the cell phone bill, the life insurance bill, all of those things. But there's always three categories where you have the potential to go over. You can't go over on your energy bill because your energy bill is what it is based on the utilization of it. You know what I mean? You can't go over on your life insurance bill because your life insurance bill is something that's going to be constant, and that's just what it is. But these three categories is, is, is where everybody is going to eventually make a mistake at some point in time. When I'm off budget, is one of these three categories. It's food slash groceries, personal spending money, or fuel. Those are the three categories that you actually control. Those are the three categories where you can pull the reins back, you can, where you can tighten the faucet and tighten things up, or you can hey, open the floodgates and just go buck wild. Those are the three categories. And so we had to look at, man, what caused this person to fall back and have to make payments? And so it was interesting because it was a few things. One, there was no real emergency fund in place. That's issue number one. So resolving that issue, going to have the starter emergency fund probably in the next week, no more than two weeks. So that's going to be light work. I think the main thing that contributed to this is not being able to understand a need versus a want. And I get it. You know, when I, and I'll tell you this, I can relate to it because when I got my motorcycle, my motorcycle is beautiful. I don't know if y'all ever seen a picture of it. I might throw it up on the screen, but it's, it's a, it's a cherry red motorcycle and it got neon yellow strips on the rim. And I mean, it's a really nice, clean looking motorcycle. But the one thing I loathe about it is the seat. Yeah, my motorcycle gear is immaculate. I'm kind of a metrosexual when it comes to my motorcycle gear. I like it to be clean. So my, I got the cool jacket and, you know, you know, the motorcycle jacket be a little fitted so you look like you swole, like you've been in the gym getting your workout on. And so the one thing I hate about my motorcycle is the seat. The front part of the seat is just damaged, just ripped up. I need a new seat. So I tried to actually get that one fixed, but the leather was just dry rotted from being out in the sun. They couldn't sew it up. All it would do would rip again. So that was uh, something we couldn't get done. So the next thing that I decided was, you know what? I'm going to get a brand new seat. Well, I priced it. A brand new seat cost about $500 because I wanted a custom seat. Like, I like, it's, it's the seat I got is a custom seat. It's soft and cushiony. The original seat on there is like sitting on a damn two by four. That shit is uncomfortable as hell. <laughs> so I wanted this new seat. It was $500. So you know what I did? I don't got a seat. When I'm on my motorcycle, I'm riding around. The seat got a split. You can see a little bit of the, the, the cotton inside or the cushion inside, but it's not a big deal because when, when my ass is on it, my ass is on it. It serves its purpose. It's comfortable. And nobody looking at the damn seat. The only way you notice the seat is ripped if I park it and I'm not on it. But I understand how you get something that you want to use. You get something that's a toy. You want to make it the way that you want it to be. So they went into debt making repairs to this toy that they had. They were enjoying the toy. And a few months later, what happened? They was like, you know what? Paying this credit card bill sucks ass. So I think that was the main thing that facilitated to it was not being able to identify, hey, I got this thing. Let me take my time and getting it how I want, you know? And that's something that I had to learn because I used to want something and I would go get it right away and worry about paying for it later. But I tell you, when I bought my house in 2018, you know how long it took me to fill it up with furniture? I didn't fill it up with furniture until like 2020. <laughs> we, we did it over two years, one room at a time and paid for it all cash. So because we learned that lesson the hard way. Now, let's fast forward back to the cash envelope stuffing. Those three categories, groceries, Spending money and fuel were the categories where you can kind of get off the rails. And so I said, you know what? It would be best to actually go get the cash every week. Don't get it all for the month. If you get Some people are that skilled where they can get the entire cash for the month, and then they can allocate it into those separate categories. I was like, nah, we're not doing that. I want you to get the cash for a week. If, if you're cash for those three categories, groceries, personal spending money, and fuel for that week. If the total for those categories just for that first week was $200, you just go get the $200. You allocate each one to each specific envelope. And then when you're ready to go spend, that's what you use. 
So I think that's going to be a really good approach. You know, the cash envelope thing just didn't work for me because, like I said, I, I think I got a little bit of discipline, but my budget is right there. And when I see that I'm on the verge of being over or I'm off pace with my budget, I just internally be like, er, nope, we got to pump the brakes on this shit. So it's going to be interesting to see how this thing plays out. I think that this individual is going to be good to go in probably 60 to 90 days, maybe sooner, because I said, you know what? You got a bunch of stuff that you don't use, which is really good stuff. Like, I'm talking about somebody who got, like, is one of you. Why do you have one, two, three? Why do you have a bunch of cars? Or why do you have uh, a bunch of things that you aren't using just sitting out in the yard? So, hey, if they have a fire sale, get rid of a bunch of stuff. I mean, all of this could be resolved probably by tomorrow or the end of the week. But it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But salute to everybody out there who is doing cash envelope stuffing because now I get it. Now I understand why it's done. It's done not to be annoying, not to have all of this cash on hand, but it's done as a control mechanism to make sure you don't get out of pocket. And, you know, that would probably be beneficial for a lot of people. Hell, it probably would have been beneficial for me at some point in time. So at some point in time, you know who I need to do cash envelope stuffing for? My wife. But that's a whole nother story for a whole nother subject.